Hey everybody, my name is Justin and today we're taking a look at Phil Towns' portfolio as of the end of Q3 2022. And Phil Towns is one of those guys that I follow very closely. I took his investing seminar a couple of years ago. I have a couple of his books right behind me. So I'm always interested to see what he does each quarter uh, as I track him very closely. So in this video, we're going to see what his portfolio looks like at the end of Q3. We're also going to take a look at his options portfolio, which I'm always interested in looking at because it kind of gives us a good idea of what stocks he might want to buy at a certain price. And then lastly, I'm going to show you his year-to-date return against the S&P 500. So if you like this video, get some value out of it, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. It really helps out the channel a lot. And let's just jump right into his portfolio. All right. So we're going to go through each one of his positions in his portfolio. He did sell out of one completely in the quarter. And then he actually bought some new shares of a new uh, position um, that I kind of mentioned in the last video in his Q2 2022 uh, portfolio. He actually had sold some put options and those went through. So it looks like he bought some, which we'll talk about in this video. So uh, let's first talk about the stock that he sold out of completely in the quarter. And that is Boeing, ticker symbol BA, sold all 20,000 shares. This is not surprising. He really dumped them just because he talked in a, in a podcast probably, wow, probably nine, 10 months ago that he didn't like that Boeing is just holding on to their cash, which really concerned him thinking, okay, you know, maybe a recession is coming up. Um, you know, maybe they're just holding it. They think that uh, the future doesn't look so good and they might need that cash. Um, so he decided to, to dump them uh, completely. Now, interestingly enough, his biggest position still in his portfolio is his cash position. So he does manage over a hundred million dollars. I think it's like a hundred and eight million in this particular uh, portfolio. And as of the end of Q3, about thirty-one million of that is in cash. So it's almost thirty percent. But the quarter before, it was almost fifty percent of his portfolio. So he released about seventeen million dollars of that cash into stocks, which we'll uh, see here in a bit. But that did go down sixteen percent in his portfolio. So interesting. So he did release a lot of cash um, during the quarter. So the smallest position, which is really no change from last quarter, and it's the iShare Silver Trust, your symbol SLV. I believe this is just a, a silver ETF. Really, really small position in his portfolio, less than 1%. Uh, next one up here is... Sturm and Ruger, to your symbol RGR. Um, you know, he's been selling a lot of call options on this one. It's been getting as smaller and smaller in his portfolio. Uh, no activity uh, last quarter at all in that one. Next one up is Armada Hoffler, which is a REIT, ticker symbol AHH. -H. Uh, no change there at all. It's about 4% of his portfolio. Uh, next one up is Alphabet, Google. Ticker symbol G-O-O-G-L. This was the new buy in the quarter. Uh, but if you listened or watched my last video on Phil Town and the Q2 portfolio, he did sell put options on Google. And those did go through. So it's about $5.8 million worth of shares in his portfolio. It's about 5% of his portfolio in total. Uh, next one up here is Sprouts Farmer's Market. Ticker symbol S-F-M. Interestingly enough, he sold 34% of his shares in Sprouts, almost a third of his shares. Uh, so he sold about 137,000 shares. It's worth about $7.2 million portfolio today. Uh, so that one was a bit of a surprise to me. Um, so he started buying the shares around $23, $24. Um, so interestingly enough that he was selling uh, last quarter. Now it did go over 30. In fact, I think right now it's trading around 33, $34. Um, so he did sell out of that part of that position at least. Uh, next one up is Huntington Ingalls, ticker symbol HII, sold 25% of those shares, about 11,000 shares to be exact. It's about 6% of his portfolio. This is a, a company that uh, manufactures warships. 
Um, so interesting that he sold out of that one. That was one that I owned as well. I sold this one probably, I don't know, several months ago. Uh, they bought another company called Alien Technology, and I just wasn't really happy about that specific purchase. Um, but Phil Town did sell a portion of that in the quarter. Uh, next one up is Activision Blizzard. He doubled his position in Activision. So it's about 13% of his portfolio. This one's interesting. This one's kind of, I think, a follow to what Warren Buffett did. You know, there's an arbitrage situation here where Microsoft has offered at $95 a share to buy Activision Blizzard. And currently it's trading around $75 to $77 a share. Uh, so if it does go through that $95, it's a 20% uptick uh, that you can make on it. But if it doesn't go through, um, then you're stuck with the shares and hopefully they, they go up. But he did double his position on that one. So that one's pretty interesting. And that, that's a company that makes games. All right, next one up is Bank OZK. This one has been in his portfolio for a long time. Uh, for most of this is rule one portfolio since it went live back in like 2019 or whatever it was. This has been his number one position and now it's his number two position. Uh, no change in the quarter at all on that one. It's about 15% of his portfolio. And then last but not least, his largest position is Netflix, ticker symbol NFLX. Uh, he did add a very, very small amount to his portfolio, about 300 shares. Uh, less than a 1% change, um, but it is the largest position right now in his portfolio, interestingly enough. So uh, really, if you think about it, he's, he has a couple of, of FANG stocks now in his portfolio with Netflix and Alphabet, and he really um, you know, hasn't had those type of large tech companies in his portfolio. So uh, interesting, you know, he teaches that you know, it teaches the four M's, the meaning, understanding the business, moat, make sure it's a competitive advantage, management, make sure that they uh, are trustworthy, that they have shareholders in mind. Uh, they're not like rogue <laughs> managers. And then fourth, uh, margin of safety, making sure that the company is selling at a discount. So obviously things Netflix and Google uh, are at good value overall. Uh, so that has his, that's his portfolio as of the end of Q3. So now let's talk about his option portfolio. And, and this is my favorite part when I'm looking into his portfolio overall, because a lot of times what he likes to do is sell put options on companies. And what he's trying to do is saying, hey, I want to buy this particular company at a certain price. And then he can collect premiums on that. So for example, like Google, maybe he likes Google under $100. So he sells... Uh, put options at a strike price of $100. He'll collect some premium, so people will pay him money. If it drops below the $100, they might get put to him at a $100 strike price. If it stays above $100, he can just collect the premiums and then, uh, you know, just sell those again. On, you know, on the next uh, put option sale or whatever. Uh, but not much went on in the quarter. At least at the end of the quarter, the only thing that showed up in his his option portfolio was really two things, and it was Goldman Sachs. It looks like he had sold some put options and he bought some put options from what I could tell. Um, and, and I'll show you the SEC uh, website that I went to to pull this information. And I'll put a link down below if you want to go check it out. But it looks like to me that he sold uh, some put options, 23 to be exact, 23 contracts. It's 100 shares per contract at a $270 strike price, but then he bought some back at 265. What he's trying to do here is a bull credit spread on Goldman Sachs. What he's thinking is that the stock's gonna be above $270 at the expiration date of October 15th. And I went and I looked at it and that is indeed what happened. It did dip down to around $290 during the quarter, but it never went lower than that. So it looks like he probably just collect the premiums from this particular uh, put option. Now, uh, he does like Goldman Sachs. In fact, he owned Goldman Sachs previously during the whole market crash in March of 2020. Uh, he bought Goldman Sachs and then sold them about a year later. So I know he really likes this company. 
Um, so that, that's kind of interesting overall. So uh, now let's go take a look at his returns real quick, and then we'll go to the government website, and I'll show you what his portfolio looks like there if you want to play around with it. Um, so I, I track what his what his portfolio does every single month to kind of compare against S and P 500 to see how he's doing. And uh, you know during the third quarter he was up five percent in July, down one percent in August, down two percent in September. So overall for the quarter he was up two percent uh, versus S and P 500, which was down four percent. Uh, during the course. So year to date through Q3, his portfolio is down 14%, where S&P 500 is down 25%. So he's doing better than the S&P. And a big piece of that is his cash position. So since he's not fully invested and the market has dropped so much, uh, he is able to compensate for that, that big uh, loss in the market. And then he's deploying cash on, on top of that. All right, so uh, now let's go take a look at the website and you can kind of see what it looks like here. So what I, what I do is go to the sec.gov website and I'll kind of start over here. So I'll go to the homepage here. And then what I do is I go to company filings up here and then I go to World's Fund Trust and then select it here. And then what I do is actually click on each one of these until I find his portfolio. And I believe it's this one right here. And when you click on that, this is what it looks like. And it's super ugly. I mean, it is, it's just a terrible, terrible format. And you can go look up any company um, and, and see what their filing is. Um, if they're a public company. So it's, it's super ugly. So I kind of go through and just kind of make it pretty for you guys. Uh, but if you want to check this out and take a look at it, I'll put a link to this specific website and to his specific portfolio here if you want to go play around with it overall. All right, so that was his portfolio in a nutshell. So he added Google to his portfolio. He added some more Netflix, but he sold some Sprouts, some Huntington Ingalls, sold out of Boeing completely. Then we got to see some of his option contracts and selling and buying put options on Goldman Sachs, which is kind of interesting uh, as well. He is doing better than the S&P 500 so far this year. His portfolio is down 14% uh, compared to the S&P 500, which is down 25% through the first three quarters of the year. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I am a big Phil Town fan. I've learned a lot of my investing strategies after him. If you're wondering how to value companies, I do offer different valuation templates through my Patreon. If you're interested, you also get access to my Discord and, uh, and Patreon-only videos and posts as well, which I'll put down in the link uh, below in the description if you want to go check that out too. So love to hear from you guys. What do you think about this portfolio at the end of Q3? Were there any surprises to you, uh, I know for me, um, I, I thought you know he would actually build his cash position up more because uh, it seems like he is more bearish on the market uh, going forward, especially going into 2023. But uh, interesting that uh, he relinquished or, 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 or released about 17 million dollars of cash during the quarter. That was a bit of a surprise uh, to see that for from my standpoint. And his option contracts uh, weren't really. Um, there's not a whole lot there other than that that credit spread that he did on Goldman Sachs. So that was also surprising to me. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Don't forget that like button on the way out. I'll catch you on the other side. Take care and God bless.